Hello friends, we are getting to that springtime, spring fever, crazy, end of the year craziness. And I know that I'm looking for ways to make sure that my students are staying engaged all the way till the end. Even though, yes, I am wearing a sweater because it's been very warm here, like 70s and 80s. And then all of a sudden today it was like, nope, it's gonna be 30 degrees. And we're like, okay. Um, but even despite that, it is actually, we're in the fourth quarter now. We're in that like springtime craziness. What we are gonna talk about is ways to increase engagement in the music room. And specifically, I have three things that are really gonna help you make sure that your students stay engaged on task all the way till the end of the year at least most of them because you know you know there's there's going to be some that just are some but we're going to get most of them in with these three simple switches so i'm going to talk about the three different like categories and then i'll talk about a couple things that are really specific underneath those that you can do that is going to be great so let's get into it all right number one is if you're looking to increase engagement play a game play a game kids love games games are how they learn games are how they experience the world they love games love them i'm always surprised sometimes i'll have my students vote like if we have an extra five minutes of class i'm like all right we have five more minutes do you want to play a game or do you want to play instruments and i always think they're going to pick instruments 90 percent of the time they just want to play a game okay okay so play some games in your classroom you can play games that are academic and that go along with what you're already talking about or on the flip side you can play games that are more for fun which is totally fine and you can have those kind of be an incentive for staying engaged and on task throughout the lesson. So let's talk a little bit about those. First, let's talk about a couple of um, games that are like on task for whatever you're working on. So if you're working on rhythm or melody, that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about the most. Number one is you can play Poison. Poison is a super simple game. I play a rhythm or a melody and you play it back. So I play and you play it back. You pick one one rhythm or a melody that's gonna be the Poison. And if I do the Poison, you can't do it or you die. Not really, but you do get out and they like to fall dramatically to the ground because they have now been poisoned. Somebody was really sensitive that one time when I said it and they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you say that, but you know what? My kids are here for it, so that's that's what I tell them. Um, super simple and it can cover anything. So you can do this with rhythm flashcards mm -hmm. and just have the poison be every couple ones. You can do it with just saying rhythms back and forth. You can do it with melodies. So you can, you know, do hand signs and sing. It's really fun, really simple, but the kids will love it. And again, you can do it along with things that you're working on. You could even do it if you're learning like a new rhythm. So maybe you're learning 16th notes. You could have all the 16th notes be poison. And so anytime I do your ticket tickas, you can't do that because those are the poisons. And so that really helps to develop their ear because they have to hear like, oh, is there a ticket ticker? Is there not a ticket ticker? And so that's an easy way to kind of like prep a new rhythm or a new melody if you do it that way. Um, number two is team versus team. So for this, you just need some kind of task card or rhythm card or melody card or some kind of question that you can ask and you split the group up into teams and then you have one team answer the question, they get the answer right, they get a point. Then the other team goes, they get the answer right, they get a point. If they don't get the answer right, you they don't get the point and the other team gets to play for that point. It's very simple, but extremely effective. I've done this a couple different ways. So I've done it with rhythm cards where you just read the rhythm card up on the screen and you know, if you get it, you get it. I've also done it with um, boom cards are really fun. I'll link them down below if you haven't tried them. I'll link a free one down below if you haven't tried it out because um, they're really, really fun. Boom cards are like interactive, um, like slideshows kind of, but you can have right and wrong answers. And so when you click on it, it'll tell you if you're right or wrong. It'll be like, ding or like, um, and so it's really interactive and really fun that way. So I've used those and put those up on the board and the kids had to pick, you know, their answer and win points for their team. You can also take it up a notch, especially great for right now, because right now I'm filming this and hopefully, hopefully going to get it up during March and March is always, you know, all about March madness and basketball. And so I love to do a variation of this called trash kit bowl. And so for this, I use my, um, there's two different ways. So I either will use the rhythm basketball themed rhythm cards and do it that way and so you get a point if you read the rhythm right and you get an extra point if you can make a basket into the trash can or 
basket or whatever. You can also use like Easter baskets work really well. And you can just do like a piece of paper, throw it into the trash can. You don't need lots of stuff and you get extra points for your team. I also have a rhythm tournament game, which is kind of similar, but it's more like Jeopardy style where the questions are worth different amounts of points. And so I've done that and same thing. If you get it right, you get those points. Plus you get a chance to shoot a basket. And if you get the basket, then you get an extra hundred points. So I'll link those down below, but you can use this with like literally anything. Even if you don't have anything, you can just ask them questions and they can do it that way but it's really fun they get ridiculously into it like we did it with piano notes one day and the fifth graders just had to say you know which one of these is f which one is c and they were so into it like i was cracking up because it was hilarious how into it they were and we weren't even doing the shooting baskets we were just you know click the answer you get a point great the end and it was really funny how much they enjoyed it so that's something that is right up your alley um, other things that you can do that are not related to the content or that are kind of other games you can play, um, singing games, of course, because this is music. So singing games are a great way to get songs in kids ears because you sing it 85 bajillion different times. And if you're learning a new concept, I highly recommend learning a singing game with that concept first and then teaching the concept afterwards because they'll be really familiar with the song because they're singing it 85,000 times. So example, um, for the upper grades, one of my favorite ones for 16 notes is love somebody. The song goes, love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody. Yes, I do. Love somebody and a baby. You. So this song is great for 16 notes because it has those 16 notes at the end. I like that it only has them at the end. So it's like we're used to playing Taws and TTs and then all of a sudden like ticka ticka, what is this? Um, and so it's really fun for that. But I also use it to play a game. The game that we play with it is I get a little object. I give it to somebody. Somebody's up in the front with their eyes closed. At the end of the song, the person in the front has to guess who has the object. If they get it right, then they get to pick who gets it next. If they get it wrong, I pick who gets it next. I usually give them three tries to get the right person. And it's very simple, but very fun. Also a great one for like testing season when you need to be quiet or if you have to be in the teacher's classrooms because it's very versatile, easy to use, highly recommend. It's very fun. They will love it. Um, another one that I love is um, We Are Dancing in the Forest. Now there's two games for this one. <laughs> the original one, oh sorry, song. This song goes, we are dancing in the forest and the wolf is far away. Who knows what will happen to us if he finds us at our play. I have videos for both of these, so I'll link the videos down below so you get more information. Um, but for this one, we there's a chase game version, which I don't actually do with this song. The one that I do use is a freeze dance situation. So one person's the wolf, everyone is dancing in the forest while we're singing at the end of the song, everybody freezes. And if the wolf sees you moving, then you are out. Usually the first time I'll play and whoever wins is the new wolf. And I let them walk around the room and look and see if anyone's moving. Um, really cute, really simple, really fun. I like that one for third grade, but I've also used it with second grade. You could probably use it with younger kids. I haven't used it with anyone older, but second, third grade, it's great work on law, and it's a great time. The second way that you can add some fun and get kids engaged in music class is by using instruments. I wanted like surefire ways to make sure that the kids were interested and engaged in your class so that you don't have to worry about, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So, Add some instruments, add games, add instruments. It's gonna make everything much, much better. Um, an easy way to add instruments to your class. Actually, I just did a video all about how to add more instruments to your classroom, so I will link that down below. But an easy way to add instruments to your class is just to have students play along with a folk song. So if you're working on a song, you can play the beat, you can play the rhythm, you can play an ostinato, you can learn the melody. There's lots of different options you can do. I love to learn the melody with um, that wolf song easy one because it only has three different notes and so we learn how to do that and then we're learning you know three different notes to go along with it you can keep the beat you can do like keep the beat while we sing and then do a flash card at the end to like practice a rhythm so lots of different options for that um also you can do rhythm cards or rhythm play alongs to practice different rhythms on the instruments um so rhythm cards just get some flashcards play different flashcards. Again, I like to alternate them and do like sing a song and then do the flashcard, sing a song, do the flashcard. Um, and you can also do rhythm play alongs on YouTube are a great way to make it real quick. And you don't even have to stand there with the flashcards and flip them through because up on the screen, it'll show all the different rhythms. Seriously, just type in rhythm play along on YouTube or like rhythm play along quarter rest, rhythm play along half note. And it has all the different ones to the people who make those. Thank you so much. You literally saved my life week in and week out. I appreciate you.
All right, and the third go-to way to add some engagement into your classroom, increase engagement in your classroom, is to do centers. <laughs> All the people who follow me are not surprised. I love centers. It is such a good way to increase engagement because if you use them, every couple of classes that it makes it kind of like a something special and something kind of exciting so like normally we have you know this is kind of what we normally do but then we do centers and it's like totally different schedule things are different and things are very fast paced i usually only keep the kids at centers for six minutes and so it's six minutes to do this six minutes to do that they get to do lots of different things they get to try you know whatever concept we're working on lots of different ways and have lots of fun with that even if I'm not doing centers, I also like to include centers activities into small groups in my lesson. So a lot of times at the end of a lesson, we'll do um, a center activity, even though it's not technically centers because everyone's doing it at the same time, but they're still in small groups or working independently and it really helps to increase engagement because the kids are actually doing things. So some of my favorite centers slash small groups, I've kind of come to just squish them all together, centers slash small groups, um, activities that are very simple, low prep. Number one is Kaboom. This is like my all time favorite game. Basically, you have a whole bunch of cards and you pull out a card, you read a rhythm or a melody or identify an instrument or whatever you want to use it for. If you get it right, you keep it. If you get it wrong, you put it back. Next person goes, next person goes, next person turns. If you get one that says Kaboom, then you, if you get one that says kaboom, then you put all of your cards back, just the person who got the kaboom. So that way the game never ends and you can get lots of cards and then get a kaboom and they all have to go back, which just makes it much more interesting. Most cards at the end is the winner. All right, number two is a flashcard composition. So for this one, all you need is flashcards, so you don't need lots of stuff. I assume you probably have flashcards if you don't even print them out. I actually have some free flashcards. I will link them down below. Um, take some flashcards, put all the flashcards out, and then you can have students grab three of them or four of them or however many they want, make a long pattern and then play that pattern on instruments or just clap that pattern, make a new pattern, play that one on instruments. I mean, you know, you can keep going and keep going and keep going. It's very simple because you don't need lots of stuff, just need flashcards, maybe some very durable instruments that the kids are not gonna break, like, you know, castanets that are plastic, those are good ones. Um, old rhythm sticks, I keep my old instruments for this purpose. Um, those kind of things are really great for centers and it's very simple and the kids love it. They like to make really, really, really long rhythms, which I think is hilarious. Um, next up is to notate a known song. So you can do this on paper, you can do it with whiteboards, you can do it lots of different options, but have students write either the rhythm or the melody or both um, to a song that you have been working on. So if we've been working on We Are Dancing in the Forest, then have the kids figure out, okay, what is the melody to We Are Dancing in the Forest? What is the melody to, or what is the rhythm to We Are Dancing in the Forest? They can write it down, they can do it on whiteboards, they can do it with um, rhythm manipulatives. I think I have those for free too. So I'll see if I can link those down below. Um, they're just like little cards that are like ta tt all of those kind of things so that you can like make things out of them um really simple really easy and goes right along with what you're talking about next up is boom cards this only works if you have technology in your room but we don't talk enough about boom cards because i love boom cards. i've kind of forgot how much i love boom cards and that i've been using them lately and i'm like oh my gosh these are amazing so i already mentioned boom cards before they're kind of like an interactive slideshow situation um and so but the good thing is that you can click on it and it tells you if you're right or not. Now there is a like subscription version of Boom where you can like enroll your kids and you get like all this data on them, which is super cool. We're not about that life. We use the free version of it, which is to use the fast play option. So the fast play option means that I get like a link. I give the kids that link or that QR code. They scan the QR code and they can go through. It doesn't save like, you know, oh, Johnny got eight correct, but it does tell them at the end how many they got right. So what I do is I just have them come at the end and tell me how many they got correct. And they just come show me and I write it down and that's it. Um, and then I tell them, see if you can get even more correct or if they get it right see if you can do them all right faster um and so that they can keep going with that so that's really good if you have like ipads or chromebooks if you don't then you can't use that one so i do apologize but if you have technology that's a really fun thing or if the kids are bringing their technology because you're a one-to-one -one school that's a great one to do if you're in the classroom and you have their technology you can use it there um you know utilize those things that you got you know because i'm thinking about testing gmas is a common so i'm like what are we gonna do when we get there, that's a good one. Boom cards are fun. Again, I'll link that free one down below so you can check it out. 
Um, and last up is Go Fish. This one takes a little bit more prep, especially if you're gonna make them yourself. I do have a version that you can purchase off TBT, um, but everyone knows how to play Go Fish, which makes it a really good entry point into centers because they already know how to play. So kids get seven cards. They take turns saying like, hey, Johnny, do you have T T T T ta ta? And if Johnny does, then he hands it to me and I now have a match. And I put those match that match together. If he doesn't, he says go fish and I draw another card. The game ends when somebody is out of cards and the person who wins is the person with the most matches. So the kids have to read the rhythms and be able to identify them in order to do this correctly. So really great. You can walk around and assess them while they're doing it and really fun and the kids will love it. So definitely go and try that one out. All right, friends, that is three ways to increase engagement in your music lessons, along with some very specific lessons as well. I'll link all those things down below in the description. And if you want to do centers, make sure that you grab my centers freebie that has pages and pages and pages on centers. You can also use them for small group if you don't want to do centers. Um, so definitely click the link in, the in my description to go grab that. It's like, I think it's 12 pages. It's a lot, it's a lot. But most of them are little to no prep. There's like links to videos and blog posts and stuff like that. So go and check that out and I will see you next time. Bye.